in the safe order. Uh, let it be noted that all members of the committee are present. Uh, tonight we have a, a little different situation. We have simultaneous meetings this evening. Um, Community Development Authority of the City of West Dallas will be meeting in conjunction with the Safety and Development Committee. Even though we both have separate agendas, a number of the items are identical on both agendas. And so rather than have staff come down here two nights in a row and give the same information as two committees and spend hours here doing that, we thought it best to have simultaneous meetings. And at this time, I'll turn it over to uh, Chairman Gerald Motter of the Community Development Authority. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, the uh, CDA meeting will uh, please come to order, and would you take roll call, please? Wayne Clark? Yes. Karen Gale? Here. Pete Hansel? Here. Jason Metz? Here. Oliver Sanchevosky? Here. Oliver Here. Joe Motter? Present. We have a quorum. The first item is notice of public hearing. I, Gerald Monner, Chairman of the Community Development Authority, will well, the secretary, well, I'm sorry, I'll read this. The executive director of the Community Development Authority has filed an authority. The notice of hearing the affidavits, the publication will be filed as soon as received from the official newspaper as required by section 66.1333 Wisconsin statutes. This document will be made part of the record of the proceedings of this matter. Purpose purpose of this hearing is to consider the proposed change in the Community Development Authority of the City West Dallas Annual Plan. Following the closing of this hearing, authority will consider and vote on a resolution approving, resolution approving the plan relative to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Section 8 Housing Choice Vulture HCV Program. If adopted, the resolution will be submitted to the Common Council of the City of West Dallas for approval and provided in Section 66.1333 of the Wisconsin Statutes. I will now turn this situation over to Mr. Stiebel, the Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is an annual HUD requirement for a housing voucher program. There's no significant changes, but we're required now to have annual public hearings. Here. Mr. Steele. By the way, we, Christy, you. The, the annual plan is uh, submitted to HUD. It basically just says, um, it describes the Housing Authority's progress in meeting its missions and goals as described in the five-year plan, which was, was adopted by the CDA last year. PHAs with more than 551 vouchers are required to submit this annual plan to HUD. It's not a significant document. It was attached um, to the CDA agenda. Um, it's the public hearing is required and then item number three uh, is the resolution um, approving the annual plan that we must submit to HUD. By the way, as part of our 602 units, or actually it's authorization of, of subsidy, uh, we have the third largest number of vouchers for homeless veterans in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, the reason that we get so many is that our staff is so good at getting them deployed, HUD keeps giving us more units. So we do good work. And again, these units could be in West Dallas. They could be all around. They could be within a mile radius of West Dallas, except in the city of Milwaukee. Okay. No further discussion, Mr. Siebel? If not, well, I'll read it. If there's any interested parties, now, it, now we express their views or propose to change the community, uh, valid community development authority of the city of West Dallas annual plan. Please raise your hand, be recognized, and upon being recognized, state your name, address, and interest in the proposal. Then you may proceed with your statement. If you appear on behalf of an interested party, please state the name of the party you represent. Does anyone wish to be recognized at this time? Okay. If not, I see there'll be, there will be no parties wishing to address the authority. I declare this hearing closed and we will now proceed to the next order of business. Which will be item number two. Resolution approving annual plan review to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Section 8 Choice Vulture HCV Program. So moved. Second. If it moved in second, is there any further discussion? If not, take roll call, please, Christy. Wayne Clark. Yes. Karen Gale. Aye. Pete Hansen. Yes. Jason Metz. Aye. All the person spots. Aye. All the person has. Aye. Gerald Motter. Aye. Resolution passes. Item 13, consideration relative to the report on Beloit Road Senior Apartment, LLC. 
Mr. Uh the, the quarterly report from the finance department uh, to Beloit Road. The CDA is the managing member of Beloit Road Senior Apartments, LLC, um, has been submitted to the CDA and staff to financial quarterly report. Uh, staff recommends um, to accept it in place on file. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Placed on file. Aye. Thank you. Um, Safety and Development Committee, uh, we have item C1 on the agenda, which is the minutes from a number of previous meetings. Is there a motion for approval? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, we'll then move on to the joint portion of our meeting um, on the Safety and Development Committee agenda, item D2. On the Community Development Authority agenda, item three, it's a resolution approving, but well, we don't want to do the resolution. Let's go down to three. You want to go to discussion action relative to Mandel Group Properties, LLCs, proposed development south of West National Avenue, the market, and within Six Point Farmers Market redevelopment area. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if we could do two as well. Two is Nona, the northern part, and th oh, three I see. is Sona, the southern part. We're not doing the resolution, though. But we're, we're not going to approve them. It's just the, the yeah. agenda is that way. All right. Okay. So it's three and four on ours. Proceed. Yeah, three and uh, four. Christy, you were going to take this one? Two and three. Uh, yes. Oh, um, three, three and four. Yeah. Just an introduction. Uh, the first item being, uh, and three and four, I'm sorry, relate to the CBA order. Um, it's a little different, the safety mm -hmm. development order. Um, the resolution is for the purchase and sale and development agreement between the CDA and Mandel Group for the what everyone's been referring to as Nona, north of National Avenue, so the former Prestdale tank site, and then a discussion relative to Sona, uh, the market development proposed by Mandel for um, the area south of National Avenue, um, west of the farmer's market. Um, I'll do just a really brief introduction, and then I'd like to introduce Mr. Ian Martin from the Mandel Group, who will um, do a presentation before both committees. And no, uh, yes. No, no, sorry. <laughs> uh, just because we're going to, Ian will be doing two parts. Yes. To this. What, one, we want as much public information as we can publicly. Uh, then we're going to ask Ian, uh, if we go into closed session, we're going to have Ian stay in closed session to explain to us the financing part that we're still negotiating on, why they want what they want. Uh, and that'll be a closed session. And then we'll excuse uh, the Mandel Group, and then we'll c continue on in closed session to talk about what we think is appropriate for what they're asking for. But so go ahead, sorry. So just a real brief introduction. Nona, um, as has been um, advertised that Aurora will be mm -hmm. occupying the northern, northern part along Greenfield Avenue. And then Mandel's proposing 177 high-end market rate apartments for the southern portion um, of the Nona site. And this is what the actual, we'll, we're discussing two purchase and sale agreements. One is actually on the agenda tonight for Nona only. Um, the south portion is to be discussed in the future. We're not at that point yet. Right now we're just gonna focus on the north as far as purchase and sale and development agreement. But we, are, we will be discussing the south in general. Um, and then just the, the south uh, is a com commercial component, um, uh, possibly seeking out some sort of grocery, retail, restaurant combination. Um, and uh, Ian can discuss that um, in further detail. Is his uh, incorporated? I didn't put it in. I did. Okay. Which one says public? I can't read that from here. So I'd like to introduce Ian Martin from the Van Dell Group. Uh, we don't have one. I'll move over the way. I'll send the pictures. Give me some space. Uh, thank you all for having me. Uh, I'm Ian Martin, uh, Vice President of Development for Mandel Group, and uh, Christy gave a um, good introduction, so I'll, I'll get um, right into it. I've got um, a number of slides I'll cover, um, uh, and I don't know how you'd, you'd like to do questions, but I'm comfortable taking them as I go or taking them all at the end. Whatever you guys uh, want to do is fine. Um, 
So, all right, so I started thinking about this on this presentation on Sunday, and uh, <laughs> so, so this was sort of a natural analogy, and it is first and goal on the 10, and the question is how do we push this over the finish line? I know it's been a long time coming, there's no doubt about it, um, but, but I do think that this is a, an apt analogy for where we're at and, and what's left to do on the deal. So, um, in thinking about, um, you know, what, uh, what I should cover here, the first thing was, you know, just a quick overview of the original concept. And, and I think the question really is, have we maintained the design and economic integrity of what we originally promised the city on this project? So I'll go through some of that. And then uh, I'll dive into each one of the components of the project, including the food cluster or retail portion, portion on Sona. Um, and for each one of those segments, I'll, I'll go through each one of these sort of sub points here because I think these are the material ones. Again, not saying that um, uh, this covers all your questions, but uh, these are the things I thought were important to mention. Um, so this is a slide right out of our first, uh, um, our presentation in the RFP process. And, and I won't read the quote, but you know, I think that when we got into this, um, we, we always meant this project to be a, you know, I think a transformative and, and kind of aspirational project. In, in that, um, we understood that it was, we wanted to have a great project that sits between Greenfield and Mitchell. But, um, but we also wanted it to be a place that was memorable and, and could influence um, more than just the boundaries of the site itself. Um, that was important to us. You know, when, when Barry did his very first project back in the 90s, it was um, the Park East. And, and that was a transformative, aspirational project that involved all these mixed-use components. So, so really, we view this as, as a, um, a like uh, development effort. Um, so um, let's, um, so, well, let me back up. I'm sorry. So this is the, the site plan. This is a little sideways. So north is to your left, um, and, and south is to your right. Um, and, and, you know, what we, one of the ways we've tried to maintain the design integrity, and we'll get into each one of these pictures um, individually, but, but it really starts with sort of the physical structures you design and, and try to build um, into a site. So um, the idea was the architecture has to be memorable, it has to be noticeable. Um, we wanted it to be, to be striking, um, but lasting, so, um, you, you might ask a bunch of questions about the yellow um, on the apartments here, and and I'm certain certainly open to, to taking any of those questions. I'm not sure if yellow is the right color or not. We're studying it, um, but I think what it conveys, I hope it conveys, is that we really have tried to um, create a physical environment that is um, consistent with our original vision of creating a transformative um, project. So, so then talking then about the um, economic integrity, I think our original projection for the project was somewhere between 62 and $65 million of total project capitalization. Um, and, and, you know, right now, I think we've, we've generally stayed in line with that. We're just under 62 million um, of projected um, project capitalization. Um, you can see how it sort of breaks out um, amongst the different components of the transaction. Uh, you know, the, um, the food cluster, uh, I would freely admit, is a little bit of a moving target from a total capitalization standpoint. Um, and I say that just because depending on who the occupant is, they might have a, a more expensive build out um, or a less expensive build out. Um, so that, that number could move. If anything, I think it's likely to go up um, not down uh, on the project. So, um, so from a, a value creation, from a tax base standpoint, I feel like we have uh, we have tried to keep that that original promise of a of a project that's north of of sixty million dollars. So uh, this is the Aurora uh, building. You can um, and and we just did a uh, we just got the site landscape and architecture approved by the planning commission and. 
And so this, these images I'll show you reflect some, but perhaps not all of, of the staff uh, comments. It was approved subject to some conditions, but I think this, this should give you a good sense of, of what this building is going to look like. And, um, you know, I'll start right with, um, these are, these are expensive uh, materials. Um, these are all real nice um, construction um, materials. So it's brick, it's stone, it's architectural metal panel, um, and all of that creates the, the look of the building. So it's a 30,000 square foot uh, medical office. Uh, the lease has been executed um, with Aurora. Um, the structure of the deal is a, you know, we call it a build to suit. Um, what that means is we're going to uh, build the base core shell uh, and then uh, Aurora will build out the inside of the building. Um, this is the, uh, they call this a collaborative care model, which um, I learned uh, as going through this process. What that means is um, you locate uh, uh, patients in a room and then you locate all the different uh, disciplines amongst the um, physician groups outside of it. So the patient doesn't have to move from one specialty to another. They stay in the room and the um, care providers of each discipline can go to the patient. And, and supposedly this is the first uh, time this concept has been applied in uh, the Milwaukee area. Uh, it's good. They're going to have 90 employees in the facility. Uh, and that's that would be 20 more than they have at their their current firehouse square facility um, the uh, Aurora folks uh, you know I think they've simply outgrown the square footage they have at firehouse square I think they're about 17,000 feet there with with no expansion possibility so um, uh, that's what drove the need for the project um, just a rough uh, site plan you've got some uh, topographic lines on there um, uh, I wanted to um, put this up so I could show you. Uh, if you remember our original presentation, there was a, a garage piece that connected the apartments um, and the medical facility. One of the main uh, motivating factors for that was it, be, it made the whole project become eligible for new market tax credit financing. As we've worked through this project, um, it be, uh, we realized that we we weren't going to have new market tax credits. So when we went back and actually evaluated what's the cost benefit analysis of this parking garage, it became clear that um, it, it wasn't necessary for an operational standpoint and the cost of it outweighed the benefit. So, um, so what we ended up with is just a, a clean freestanding 30,000, just a little over 30,000 square foot Aurora building. Um, just another um, shot of the architecture. This is on the, the corner if you were looking at it from uh, 66 or six points in Greenfield Avenue. Um, one of the design concepts for the building that we worked with the staff on was um, to try to view the building as having sort of four corners on it, all of those corners being accented with, with the stone um, material. Uh, one of the other things I like to show point out in this this image is a couple things the bubbler bike station so that's well underway the the CSMs have been planned to accommodate it and and we've worked with Aurora to plan their building accordingly for the bubbler bikes um, I think that's a great piece of, of adding the pedestrian connectivity throughout the project so um, we're excited to have it here the other thing I like to point out is the um, we talked a lot about how you create a, a pedestrian friendly streetscape and one of the ways you do that is you try to pull the buildings as close as you can to the to the sidewalks and uh, within reason so what you can see in this picture is is we have pulled the building um, as close to that corner as we can to make it um, you know feel like a, a real life pedestrian urban environment we we worked hard to try to figure out how to keep some um, grass areas, some landscaping areas along the street um, uh, to make it a, you know, sort of an enjoyable place to walk. Um, this is another image just looking um, a little bit more dead on at the east side of the building, but um, you can see the, the landscaping strip there as well. So um, I'll talk real, this is a lot of stuff, I'll go, I'll go as quick as I can. Um, 
so status of design documents. Um, so that's really um, the, the critical um, first part of all this is working through the architecture, the floor planning, um, the MEPs, the fire suppression. And, and right now we're about 25% of the way through the construction documents. Uh, the way architects like talking about it is um, conceptual design, design development, and then construction documents. So. So we're all the way through these first two phases where a lot of the big issues get vetted and we're down to this construction document phase. That, that will allow us to put the plans on the street and get competitive subcontractor bidding. So, uh, so we're very close. We have um, weekly meetings with our architects and MEPs and, and engineers in Aurora to, to advance these plans. Um, talk generally about the, the financing status here. Um, we've identified uh, and have uh, term sheets we're working through with our lender for this um, project. Um, we, we talked, you know, very rig uh, from day one that this, this project was going to have a mix of, of different pieces of public uh, financing involvement, whether it's new market tax credits or TIF, and that there'd be some combination of the two. Um, this one is going to be a new market tax credit um, transaction with fire. Um, the good news is the bank that we've identified to provide the construction debt on this is also um, likely or, or could be the tax credit investor. Um, as, as John or Patch would, would have probably told you, that's helpful in that it helps reduce legal fees um, on these transactions, which tend to be pretty significant. Um, so permitting and approval. So, so I mentioned that, that we had our site landscape and architecture approved. Uh, the zoning's been done for a while. Um, the SLA got approved on the 6th. Um, we're going to have a meeting, a, a permit review meeting on the 22nd um, with the city just to make sure we understand what the level of detail is we need to uh, provide in the construction documents to get our, our, our review going. But also, due to the way this deal is structured, there's actually going to be two separate sets of documents. One for Mandel's scope of work, that's, you know, site work, the shell of the building, the exteriors, and all that stuff. And then Aurora will have a separate set of plans for their interior portion. So uh, I thought it prudent to meet with the, the building department and figure out, um, make sure we understood exactly what they wanted from a detail standpoint between the two permits. Um, I anticipate having having a, a set of construction documents to submit for city review by the 20th of October. So, um, so then talk. I'll talk a little bit about construction bidding. So, um, uh, Berghammer is going to be our um, general contractor for this project. Um, they've provided preliminary estimates. Um, I say here some value engineering needed. Um, this is always the way these projects go. There's no reason to, to panic when you see this. When you get a contractor to put preliminary numbers on a project, they almost always come in over budget. So, um, so there's this process, you know, the fancy word for it is value engineering, but at the end of the day, we're just trying to figure out how to make the budget work. So um, that process has already started, and I think we have a good path to make the budget get back in line with the budget on this project. Um, the goal is to get a set of, um, you know, uh, uh, GMP documents um, to the subs by October 3rd. Um, if we do that, that means we'll have all the bids in-house, we'll have the subcontractors qualified, and hopefully have a, a um, construction contract to sign uh, by the 10th of November. Um, that date's important because um, we really can't close on the financing, any piece of the financing, until till we know what it's going to cost to build. So, so right now, you know, it's, it, it's a real push to get these design documents done, reviewed, and incorporating comments we might get. Um, so, so the major milestones here. Um, you know, closing and groundbreaking uh, on December 1st uh, is the target. I, for me, they're, they're generally simultaneous events. You know, there's, um, there's going to be, you know, a day or two maybe where after we've closed, we have to mobilize our contractors, but it'll be that quick. So, um, so that's, that's the plan. 
In terms of what that means for an opening date, um, you know, I have um, some control of that in that um, I have to deliver my scope of work to Aurora so they can get in and do their, their build out. The outside date by which that has to be done is April of 2019. Um, it's possible and, and we're working with Aurora to try to figure out how to bring that date um, uh, into the end of like November, December of 2018. So, um, so what I'm giving you here, I think, is uh, for the openings, the outside date. Okay, so. So we Aurora open then? So the outside date for the opening is April of 2019. When was your delivery date to Aurora? So to hit the April 19 date, the outside um, delivery date for our scope of work would be, call it August 1st of 2018. Thank you. That's, that's for the outside to be done? Yep. Okay. All right. and, and the way these things, uh, you know, it, it, I think Berghammer is likely to be the contractor on the interior build out too. So. Um, so I, you know, I'm talking about this like it's two totally separate things that are happening. But the reality is, we'll we will reach a point of completion on on our work where we can get Aurora in to start building out the inside, and that's part of the discussion about how we can we can bring the opening into 2018 as opposed to 2019. Can they begin construction at all on the inside before the outside is done? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So all there's right. some there's some amount of overlap um, that that can that can go on. Okay. It's always a little, you know, it's, it adds a little bit difficulty to coordinating with all the various subs, but in this case, since since I, I think it's likely that the same contractor is going to do both the shell and the inside, hopefully a lot of that coordination becomes easier. Any other questions? Yeah. The, um, you alluded to this, but the Firehouse Square project, uh, building is, um, was originally designed to accommodate growth up as well as out. And, but when they got around the building, that was pulled out. The structural support is not there to go up or they would continue to be there and therefore the need to move. Is this new facility being designed to be able to go up and out? Uh, I don't know the question. Uh, the answer to the question, I'd have to ask our, our structural engineers to, to answer that. But I can follow up with you. We do not think so. You don't think I would so. be surprised if it was. It's a steel frame. It's a steel frame building, mm -hmm. one way or the other. Um, and and once, you, once you step into that, um, that type of construction, um, second stories get a little bit easier to deal with. The bigger problem becomes um, how do you, on a, especially on a big footprint like this, how do you support all the rooftop mechanical units that'll go on top of it? Um, but I'll have to follow up with a more specific question for you. And parking. Or answer. There's just enough parking to accommodate a 30,000 square foot medical facility. Right. Okay, so so let's talk about the uh, the apartments here. I, uh, you know, I mentioned that um, that that the you know the the we've got a a, a, a prominent yellow prow on this building that faces mm -hmm. a corner of National and and Six Points. Um, you know, our 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 sort of. Our guiding principle from an architectural standpoint on this deal was to do something that was striking and memorable, but which wouldn't look bad in four or five years. Uh, we're going to own the thing for a lot longer than that, so so we don't have a lot of interest in, in reworking a building. Um, so, so that's how we got to this point. Um, you know the problem when it comes to things like like colors and certain architectural design is. Uh, it's a pretty subjective topic. So that's why I say I'm not entirely sure that yellow is going to be the color at the end of the day. Um, we just we just had last week our first meeting with the staff to talk through the building design. And what I offered to do in that meeting was take a couple of these elevations and put different colors on it. And we could all we could all have our opinion about about what it's look 
uh, supposed to look like. We looked at red, we looked at blue, we looked at yellow, and and the reality is if if I if I came in here and showed a a blue uh, color, uh, somebody would probably ask me why I didn't use yellow, um, and that's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. Um, but I think stepping back from that bigger picture, the idea is, is, is this building something that, um, that when somebody drives by, they will take note um, now and in, and in five years and take note in five years such that it's a good thing, not a bad thing? Yes, sir. Yep. So make part out. The, you notice the, the off colors that are on this side of the wall? That's because it's in the shade. This side is also has that same color coloration, except that this is showing a rendering, showing the sunshine on it. Right. So it, this does different hue. So it's probably going to have all of this. And we've looked at this company that makes this stuff in, around the country in San Francisco and whatever. So we're, we're seeing that Nietzsche is out there often anymore. And even the yellow is out there. So it's, we're, we're as staff, we were scratching our head going, whoa. Uh, that's something that's got your attention and do we do we not like it and we can't come to say we don't like it it's an architectural thing it's supposed to be edgy so but we don't know so we're still trying to go through this and we'll talk about that later where does the color where does the final decision on color rest with you guys or with the plan commission well it's always going to be the plan commission that's what I thought but yep. I wasn't sure just in case yeah now did you only ever look ultimately it's the common council well, yeah, it makes that decision, yes. but, but yes. You said you looked at, you, you tried blue and red and yellow. Were yeah. you only looking at like the primary colors, or did you go into the other like so, more muted colors, or were they only these big? I want to choose first. <laughs> we, uh, the, the honest answer is we started with bold colors. Okay, and, that's, and that's, that tells that's me because of the done. design is pretty yeah. bold. So. All right. and, and the, the concept on it, there's, uh, the concept on this building was we wanted to create a building that, um, didn't look out of place in that it had some characteristics of traditional uh, industrial buildings that you might have found around here, um, but at the same time look look totally modern and, and current. And so, so when you work down the facades of the building, and I'll show you some more pictures of it, you'll see it's a we have a repetitive window pattern that's very common and consistent with what you would see in, in a traditional building. We have this. We've proposed a a sort of softer, more muted background palette um, between the corners of the building where we have the color pop. Um, so I think the concept, the colors are almost interchangeable here. You know, I think I think you you can you can leave the balance of the building in place um, and, and play around with the colors to see ultimately what what you, what looks the best. Just one other comment. On the, the the windows are exceptionally large, more than we see in any other places. I mean, if, if if it wasn't for the yellow, we'd go, "Wow, this is great building." We don't know what to change. Uh, however, the yellow just, as it's supposed to, stuck out, and that's what it's designed to do. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a great looking building. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Not at all. The it, and I probably should have mentioned that. I mean. <laughs> One of one of Mandel's sort of calling cards that's consistent of all of, on all of our projects, and we feel like it's a critical part of of our success with these multifamily buildings is the amount of windows. And um, it's not the cheapest um, way to build a building. You know, a lot of our competitors um, um, save money by doing smaller windows. What you see here, though, are these are almost floor to ceiling windows in every unit. So. So if we've got a we've got a nine foot floor to ceiling height, these windows are um, eight foot six, starting at the floor, going all the way up to six inches below the ceiling. So, so the amount of glazing that's on this is is substantial, and uh, it looks good from the outside. But more importantly, in my mind, if you're living in it, it just you know the natural light is indispensable, especially when you you live in a in a efficiently designed smaller apartment unit. That natural light makes all all the difference in the world. I see four balconies. Is there a reason for that design? Yeah. So so the 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 plan right now is that um, all the two bedrooms and three bedrooms uh, will have balconies. 
Um, the one bedrooms and studios will not. Um, they will have um, glass elements that are operable such that they can be open to feel like you've got a little bit outside in going on, but we don't have balconies on all of them. Um, on the ground floor, um, uh, similar with, uh, strategy with patios, um, the exception being that all the units on the interior um, courtyard of the project will have patios, um, so you can walk out onto a patio. So, um, ju just some basic detail about, about the project. We're at 177 units here. Um, we, we are projecting the highest rent in the market. Um, we think it's going to be the nicest product, both inside and out in the market. Um, it, we originally thought we'd get a little closer to 200 units here, um, but, but I'll show you a slide here. We had to um, account for some uh, geotechnical issues um, on the site where we lost a little bit of the unit uh, count, but, but generally we're, we're in good shape. All underground parking um, in the project. We have some surf, about 50 to 60 surface stalls on the inside, but um, it's a good parking count, more than we have a lot of our properties. Um, it's gonna be highly amenitized, so, so um, large clubhouse, um, amenity area that's going to have all the stuff you might want like a media room a demonstration kitchen fitness facility we're gonna have it we figured out a way to get a dog park onto the site which um, you know in an urban environment is very desirable um, but typically very difficult to achieve so um, so what what ended up happening is is when we um, had to change the building footprint to address the geotechnical issues we ended up with this uh, unusable space that we, we tried to figure out a way to program, so I'll, I'll show a picture of that. Um, uh, Mandel Group is going to um, develop it, own it, operate it. Uh, we, uh, there's an apartment industry event um, every year that's um, in, in our space is important, and it was just, uh, just held last night. and. Um, and we won um, 10 awards, um, and it covered a whole range of, of different things, everything from just best overall owner operator to um, how it, you know, architectural things like how it looks, but also how it's managed. And, and you know, we always are happy when our, our maintenance and our property management folks win awards as best in market. Um, it's one thing to build it, but you still got to operate it over time. Okay, so. Um, so this area that I've, I've highlighted here, um, we had to bend this building a little bit um, to the east. On the southwest corner, there's about 30 feet of foundry sand and other very difficult uh, geotechnical conditions that become very, very expensive to build on. So um, we lost some units when we bent it, but we saved a lot of cost, uh, foundation costs by doing that. Um, on the far south or far bottom of the screen here, um, this is where we were able to figure out how to put the dog park in. So once we built bent the building, we ended up with a pretty big area. Um, originally, it was just going to be graded um, down to the property line. Instead, what we've done is we created a tiered um, retaining wall. Uh, and by doing that, we were able to flatten out a chunk of land and create a dog fenced-in dog park that's you know going to be 25 to to 35 uh, hundred square feet. So good, good spot, big size to let your dog off leash. Um, so this is just an image of um, so you, this is National Avenue. Um, you can see the interior courtyard. Um, and, and where our connectivity is to the retail on, on the far right side of the screen. Uh, you can see the, the color pops on the corners of the building here. Um, you know, the, this interior courtyard concept is something we've done downtown. I talked about it in prior meetings here. Um, it really is critical, especially on a deal like this, because, because you take what, what is typically your most difficult units, inward facing units, and you turn those into the most desirable units by fronting them out over open space courtyard. So um, I think that's a, a, a subtle feature, but one that's, that's very important on this project. Um, I mentioned the, the clubhouse and amenity space. Um, so that's what you see 
sort of right here where my cursor is. So um, we've got a rooftop deck on it. Um, the, uh, and the overall concept of it was to try to create a, essentially a glass box that's accented with this similar color um, pop that we have on other parts of the building. So, uh, it, and it was important for me that it faced National Avenue because that's where all the main pedestrian activity is ultimately going to be. So you can imagine if you're on this this roof deck, um, my um, uh, uh, rendering guy got a little creative and put this tiki bar on here. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to be a tiki bar. We'll have something, but but you can imagine being up here when the farmer farmers market's going on on a Saturday. Um, we'll have grills, fire pits, that type of stuff, um, sitting out there looking over the farmer's market. It creates a real sort of, um, I think, a nice nice atmosphere and environment. Um, and, and all the glass um, here, and I'll have better pictures for our planning commission meeting, but um, again, substantial amount of glass, almost like a glass box. So when you're standing in that, uh, that portion of the project, whether you're looking to the interior courtyard or you're looking out at the farmer's market and the pedestrian activity, uh, it's a very, very attractive two-story expanse. So um, you walk into it. Um, the second story is more of a mezzanine, so it all feels very open. You can get on a treadmill and look out over National and into the farmer's market. Um, so it's a, it's a nice, nice feature. Uh, this is another shot. This would be if you were standing in the middle of the um, project looking south towards all the retail. I think it's a good shot because it sort of demonstrates this concept of connectivity between this project and the food cluster to the south where you can see how it all lines up. Pedestrian activity gives you a little better sense of, of what this amenity space and the glass box concept would look like. Um, so. Um, that's that's sort of where we're at, I think, on the, the architectural part of it. So um, status of design documents, very similar here. We're, we're about 25% of the way into um, construction documents, so we're in the last phase of that, that process. Um, financing uh, status, and, and uh, so, so again, in the, the public piece of this, this is going to be a developer finance TIF structure. Um, so, so the developer uh, goes out and collateralizes the TIF income stream. We go out and find the bank to give us the money for it so the city doesn't have to. Um, we've got a term sheet worked out with our lender for the project. Um, and again, the total project capitalization is $37.7 million um, in line with you know, it's a little bit less than we originally thought, but of course we've lost, you know, 23 units from, from what we thought we might get here. But uh, from an overall standpoint, it's, it's pretty good. So <coughs> permitting and approvals, um, we submitted um, for our site landscape and architecture on 825, our uh, planning commission hearings on uh, 927. Uh, like I mentioned, we've already started working with the staff through some of their comments. Is yellow the right color or not? Um, and, and so our hope is that we'll have all of that um, buttoned up by the time we get to the Planning Commission on the 27th. Uh, similarly, we, we've got a uh, permit review on, on the 22nd, and I'm targeting a, a permit submittal um, by the 20th. The permit review here is a little bit more straightforward because we're not sort of dicing up the construction work, but I, you know, I thought it important to at least, uh, if we're having a meeting, let's cover this too and just make sure we're not missing anything. Um, so, so construction bidding, again, story's the same. Um, we got a, a preliminary estimate in. Um, it was a little high, um, but, but I'm, uh, we're all pretty confident that, uh, that we'll get this back in budget. Uh, so, so the CDs here, there's, there's a little bit more work, quite honestly, that goes into um, uh, creating construction documents for apartments. If you think about it, we have to make all the finished selections, so, so it's not, we're just not building a box for somebody else to occupy. We've got to figure out what's the flooring look like, what's the countertops, what's the cabinetry look like, um, what do the hallways look like. Um, we, we pay attention to every lighting fixture that goes up in the, in the project, and, and we've started that process, but it, it's an added element that you don't have in your typical commercial deal, so that, 
that explains the little bit longer timeline. Um, so, so if we get the CDs to the subs on, you know, the targets aug or October 10th, uh, bids in by right before Thanksgiving, um, you know, it's, it's puts us into holiday season, unfortunately, but, but I think that's a realistic date. Um, major milestones, I think a, a closing and groundbreaking on this is, um, is February. Um, the, the way we think through how quick we can close these things um, is again uh, based on how quick we can get a signed construction contract with our general contractor. So getting the bids in on the 24th, what we need from that point to get to a closing is about 60 days. What happens in that 60 days is we raise all the cash uh, that we have to, which is substantial in a project like this. All the lawyers get together and work out the, the um, closing documents, the loan agreements, the notes, the mortgages, all of that type of stuff um, gets hammered out over that 60 day period. If we do that, um, I think we'll have our first units online by um, spring of 2019, and I think we'll be done with all the, all the units by, by fall of 2019. The, the timing here from a big picture standpoint, I, I think works out really well because um, I would love to be delivering apartments in the spring of 2019 when the farmer's market's open, uh, when the Aurora facility's open and operating, and, and I'll talk about it here shortly, but I think we have a good shot to get some of the food cluster uh, businesses open by that same time. So, so the closer we can sequence all these things to be open at the same time, the better off I think we'll be. All right, so um, talk about, we call it the food cluster. This is a retail portion of the building. Um, uh, just a, an image to show you what the architecture looks like. Um, you guys are going to think I watch a ton of TV. I was thinking about, I was watching the Brewers game. Um, who knew they'd be in a, in a pennant race. But, um, but and maybe you read this in the Business Times article, but I compare this retail um, food cluster effort um, and, and making those deals to a, a nine-inning baseball game. And, and in that, each one of these <laughs> occupants is a whole series of conversations like innings in a baseball game. And right now we're in various... Um, innings with each one of these folks. So, um, so this is the kiosk building that's on the farmers market property. I think we're in that, uh, you know, bottom half of the eighth inning on this one. We're uh, we have a signed LOI um, with a good operator, um, so we feel very confident in that one. Um, I think we're in the bottom of the seventh inning with our grocery store. This is a critical one. This has been the toughest one to put together, quite honestly. Um, but it's also the one that all the other guys are most interested in because it's a daily traffic generator and everybody likes that. So uh, we've got a good operator identified um, for, for the grocery. Um, 23, they're gonna go into generally into the box we've got shown here. So nice size, 23, just over 23,000 square feet. Um, I think we're in the, um, so this is a multi-tenant building here. So, so as this leasing has progressed, we're gonna end up with two tenants in here. One's gonna be a wine bar, one's gonna be a coffee bar, or a coffee shop. The coffee guy is, is he's one of the, the guys that's, I think we're in the, you know, call it bottom half of the eighth with him because we've got the terms worked out. The only term that we don't have worked out is he wants to know the grocery store deal is done before he finalizes his deal. So those two are linked. The wine bar, I think we're, you know, we're probably in the, call it six inning with them. They've spent a lot of time um, working on what their uh, costs are gonna be to build out their store. Uh, they've worked on their sales projections and they've, um, they've uh, I think they're almost done with that part of it. Uh, they've, they've been out into the uh, lending environment. I know they've had conversations with the staff about, about how they're gonna finance that project. So, um, so I, think, I think that building is, is in pretty good shape. Um, this, this building here has taken on a little bit of a, a life of its own. Um, we're in the, call it, um, probably, probably fifth inning with a, a group called Brewmasters here. 
it's a new restaurant concept, um, a, a micro brew tap concept. Um, the guys are qualified operators. They have other restaurants, not quite like this one. Um, they've talked about, they've asked us to look at some things like roof decks, um, basements with prep kitchens so they can have, um, maximize the amount of seating uh, area. Uh, so right now this building's changed shape and, and it's probably closer to 6,400 square feet than the 4,500 square feet we've shown here, um, not counting the roof roof deck feature. Um, you know, the, the roof deck feature is, is not cheap. You know, I don't want to mislead anybody about that, but um, when you look at all the restaurant concepts over the last couple of years have become very successful, um, a lot of them have this, this roof deck feature. So we thought it was worthwhile to keep the conversation going with these guys and, and at least explore it. Um, I'm probably in the second inning with about 10 groups on this building right now. Quite, I had hoped to put this Brewmasters group into this building because, you know, if you looked at any of our images, I was calling this building the Brew Pub building um, uh, for, for various reasons that this group prefers the, the other building. So, so I've got a bunch of conversations going, uh, none of which are, are past the second inning on this one. Okay, so, um, so talk about some of the challenges, and I know I've mentioned some of these before, um, so I won't, I won't dwell on them, but um, the, you know, the vision from day one on this was to try to create a, a lineup of highly qualified, good local operators um, that, that shared our vision, meaning that these weren't, these weren't guys that were used to doing strip malls and stuff like that. We wanted something different than that. And, and when you when you narrow up your target pool that way, it, it does get a little challenging, but um, but I think it's one we're overcoming. Um, you know, this next one, global pressure on retail development and local competition. This is really more for the grocery component of it. You can go up and down Miller Parkway right now, and every national grocer has a footprint there. To the extent they don't, uh, it's the pick and save right across the street uh, from this. So. Um, and and we, all, we all know what Amazon is doing and, and what they're, they bought Whole Foods and getting in the grocery business. So, so there's a lot of pressure on this, which meant that we really needed an operator that was a good neighborhood uh, concept. And I think we found them, um, but it took us a while to get there. Uh, long development timeline. Um, for, for a group like Aurora or an apartment developer, thinking out, you know, 24 months in advance is what we do. It's you, you do this sort of planning. Um, for a lot of these these smaller restaurant guys, they're entrepreneurial and opportunistic. So so they don't necessarily think in terms of what are we going to be doing 24 months from now. We're not. Are we going to be opening more stores? Um, and so so what they really want to see is they want to see some dirt moving you know and and I think the way we'll attract a lot of attention to this is is once we break ground on the, the Aurora and the apartments and people see just how real this is I think we'll get more attention um, from these these guys to the project um, inherent challenge of high capitalization requirements so so restaurants are the most expensive buildings to build because of just the high design, um, the kitchen equipment, and all the bells and whistles that go with it. Um, a lot of restaurant guys um, are not highly capitalized. Even the biggest uh, restaurant groups in town you can think of um, uh, don't, uh, aren't highly capitalized in that they can just go build a building and, and drop $4 million to do it. So. So you've got this dynamic where we've got expensive buildings and likely occupants operators that aren't highly capitalized to go in. Now, one of the things we learned on this last point that we've changed since I think we last spoke was thinking about how these deals might be structured. Um, originally, the thought was Mandel would be a landlord and we would lease this space out to tenants and we'd charge them rent, just your very traditional development deal. Um, one of the things I learned as we started talking with all these different uh, potential restaurants and even and the grocery folks is if you're a restaurant guy, it's really hard to go out 
and get a bank to loan you money based on how many burgers and beers you think you can sell. Um, it's, it's collateral, but it's not great collateral. Um, so what a lot of these banks want to see is, is real estate collateral. So um, what we started doing was thinking about it and talking to some of these, these potential occupants of, you know, all right, Mandel will not be a landlord anymore. We will act as master developer where, where we help you put your capital together. We help you reach out to architects and design the space. We'll help you contract for it. Um, but, but ultimately, we won't own it. You will own it. And what that does is it gives a lot of these occupants the ability to go to potential lenders and say, say look, it's, it's, I'm going to do $2 million a year of gross sales, and uh, I'm going to own the real estate. So it becomes just a lot easier deal for bankers to understand. Um, you know, uh, Mandel probably won't do as well on it, but that's fine. This was always meant to be uh, an amenity for the apartments as much as it was anything else. So, um, so we were happy to, to redo that structure. Um, total project capitalization, $14 million. Uh, major milestones. Um, you know, I think we're going to try to make these deals um, and get into the design development phase um, by spring of 2018. I think that's realistic for the grocery. I think it's realistic for the coffee and wine bar. And I think it's realistic for at least one of the, the restaurants. And so that's our goal is to um, go from, you know, the, the fifth or sixth inning with some of these folks um, to, the, to the end of the game by, by spring of 2018. The good news with that is, is what that does is we probably ha then have groundbreakings in late uh, summer 2018, and we can still get these folks open by spring of 2019 when Aurora and the apartments um, are opening as well. Um, so, so it's a little bit behind the other phases of the project, but from a big picture timing standpoint, um, we think it's still, uh, it works well. So that's the, that's the end of the food cluster, and um, mm. I guess I'll just end with, with what, you know, my, I'll, I'll carry my, my, my bad sports analogy out even further here. Um, original concept, $62 million, um, and, and our just overall concept, I think, remains intact. Um, the Aurora, um, the apartments, it, it really is a race. It's just a matter of how quick we can get all the consultants to move, get the plans approved, and get in the ground on it. So, so it's a race. Um, I think we've made solid um, progress on the food cluster um, piece of this. I think it will pick up uh, steam towards the end of this year and beginning of next year when, again, when people see dirt moving, I think, I think we'll get more attention on it. Um, and, and, you know, we, um, uh, this one's a little, um, uh, I, I don't know how relevant it is or not, quite honestly, but I mention it just because, um, again, I, you know, we're, we're sensitive to how long this has taken. And um, I know from, from your chair, it's probably easy to look at the situation and say, you know, what the hell's been happening for the last 18 months, two years on this project, and, and I get it. Um, you know, I can, I can uh, bore you all night long about all the different stuff we do and all the weekly meetings we have, but at the end of the day, I think the thing that probably gives you the most comfort is, is we're, you know, we, we're a million dollars committed on this, this deal. Um, of that a million, we're, you know, more than a half million is money already out the door. The other half is money I got to start writing checks for uh, any day now. So, um, so you know, this is a mil we view this as a, a million dollar investment, and we don't take that that type of stuff lightly. So um, that's it. I'll answer any questions you guys got. Anyone have any questions? No, thank you again. Um, we want to go into executive session now. Uh, no, but there's a couple other things that we can do in the public, and then we'll then we'll at the end of you stick around, then we'll go into closed session. Okay. Uh, if we could hold uh, on the safety development committee agenda four, five, six, mm -hmm. seven, and eight. <coughs> oh wait a minute, we could do eight. Mm -hmm. Oh here, look. Oh, you're... Yeah.
on the CD. Yeah, we could do. We could do that. Nope, that's closed. Why don't we do the closed session and when we come yeah. back in, we can do all the rest of it. Then. Very good. Okay. Because then we'll, we'll meet in closed session jointly. Excuse me, Tom. If you would not, if you would mind, would you say safety development? If you would say and read development open, authority, yeah. we just read them once. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please take notice that the Safety and Development Committee of the City of West Ellis and the City of West Ellis Community Development Authority will meet at approximately 6 p.m. or as soon thereafter as time permits on Wednesday, September 13th, 2017 in room 128 City Hall, 7525 West Greenfield Avenue, West Ellis, Wisconsin, following conclusion of consideration of the above portion of its regularly scheduled agenda to vote on a motion to convene in closed session at said time and place for discussion action relative to a Resolution approving a purchase and sale agreement and development agreement between the Community Development Authority of the City of West Dallas and Mandel Group Properties, LLC, for commercial and residential development north of West National Avenue, Nona, the market within the six points, Farmer's Market Redevelopment Area. B, discussion action relative to Mandel Group Properties, LLC, proposed development south of West National, Sona, the market within six points, Farmer's Market Redevelopment Area. C, discussion relative to the sale of public land located within the 68th Street and Mitchell Street redevelopment area, TID 14. D, discussion action relative to acquisition of real estate in the vicinity of South 70th Street and West Washington. E, resolution authorizing the city attorney to proceed with foreclosure of the property located at 2892 South 96th Street and to take such action, further action as may be necessary and appropriate with respect to such matters. Upon conclusion of the closed session, the Safety and Development Committee and the Community Development Authority will convene an open session to consider its public agenda, including motions to recommend approval or rejection of the above listed deliberations or any of the public agenda items that have not been acted upon. For the Safety and Development Committee, is there a motion to go into the closed session? All in motion. Aye. So All in Vitaly. Aye. All in Ranky. Aye. All the person probes. Aye. And the chair votes. Aye. All right. Chris, oh.